Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Tuesday, March the 2nd, 10 o'clock in the morning, and it is good to be on schedule here again. We started yesterday a brand new book, the book of Ecclesiastes, written by Solomon, the son of David, also the king of Israel. He succeeded David for the throne, and uh, he was given more wisdom than any man who would ever live. No one before Solomon was wiser than him, and no one that comes after him will be wiser than him. And so we've got the wisest man ever. We told you yesterday that Solomon's the author of three books in the Bible, the book of Proverbs, the book of Ecclesiastes, and the book of Song of Solomon. And they're all right there consecutive, aren't they? Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. But the order in which they're written is mixed up. Proverbs was written when he was a middle-aged man. Ecclesiastes was written when he was an older man, and then Song of Solomon was written when he was a younger man. So the chronological order is Song of Solomon, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Song of Solomon was written as a love story between he and one of the many women he loved, right? He had a thousand wives and concubines combined, not to mention probably girlfriends. So uh, he was quite the ladies' man. Then we find the book of Proverbs. And Proverbs is an instruction book on life for his son Rehoboam, trying to teach his son how to live, how to get through life properly. And then the final book that he wrote was the book of Ecclesiastes, written as an older man, getting ready to pass on. But the catch of Ecclesiastes is that it has, as its focus, life is viewed through the eyes of a carnal man or a lost man. So we're taking the spiritual value out of life completely. We're taking eternity out of life completely. If life consists only of what we see in front of our face, what does it amount to? And the key word of the book is vanity, which means emptiness or nothingness. So it started out yesterday with him saying, you know, as I looked around me, I realized there's nothing new. Everything's already been said. Everything's already been done. Everything is vanity. That theme is going to continue as we move on forward. Don't let it depress you, though. Let it give you a perspective that it's not this world that we live for. It's the next world. It's not this life. It's eternal life. All right, let's pray, and we'll jump into chapter number two. Father, we love you, and we ask your blessing on our reading and study this morning. Thank you for the wisdom of Solomon that you gave to him when asked if he could have anything he desired. He asked wisdom, and you granted it to him. We know you're not a respecter of persons. Please grant us wisdom this morning as well. Put wisdom into our minds and into our hearts from our study today. We ask that in Christ's name. Amen. All right, Ecclesiastes chapter number two, verse number one. I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. So he says here at the start of the chapter, I'm going to pursue pleasure and mirth, which mirth is simply partying, right? Happiness, joyfulness, uh, entertainment, uh, humor, all of those things. Now, is there anything wrong with humor? No. Is there anything wrong with entertainment? No. Anything wrong with going to a party? No. I mean, depending on the behavior at the party, right? What kind of party are we talking about? Uh, a celebration, a feast? No. Nothing wrong with any of that. But to live to those ends where I just need to be entertained every second of the day, I need something funny going on around me all the time. I can never get serious. You, If that's the way you want to live, you want to pursue your own entertainment, you're going to find a life of emptiness. There's more to life than just being entertained. And we look around us and entertainment is everywhere. Television, movies, internet, video games, websites, uh, phones, you name it, YouTube. We're surrounded by entertainment. Many of you grew up in the day when there were only three television networks, ABC, NBC, CBS. And then I remember, still remember when Fox came online and became the fourth major network. And now we have 
cable systems with hundreds of channels on them and uh, television shows about other people living ordinary lives. And it's just ridiculous and silly how much entertainment is there out there. And if you decide you're going to keep up with every show and every popular TV program and you got to see every movie, well, you're going to live an empty life. There's more to life than just entertainment. Verse 2, I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? So you know that period of time where I lived simply to laugh, I thought, man, this is really empty. Nothing good is coming from it. I saw in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. And so he says, you know what? I'm going to pursue drinking. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to enjoy wine and strong drink. I'm going to pursue that and see what that gets me. You guessed it, vanity, emptiness. Verse 4, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards and planted trees in them of all kind of fruits I made me pools of water, to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold, and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers, and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments, and that of all sorts. So I was great, and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. So he says, you know what? I built the biggest and best house I could imagine to build. It had every kind of room imaginable. We had a, an amazing living room, and we had an incredible family room, and we had a beautiful dining room with the longest table you've ever seen and chandeliers hanging over the top of it. Our kitchen was state-of-the-art with all of the best appliances and, and stoves and grills and ovens and you name it. We had it. Uh, we had a game room and man caves and she sheds and all of those weird things that people talk about today. We planted gardens and vineyards. We had animals. We had horses. We had a petting zoo. You could come to my house and ride an elephant if you want. We had everything. I got men servants. I got women servants, people to wait on you hand and foot. We also went out and uh, we, we uh, what else did he say he did there? Pools, swimming pools, singers. He had people just around playing instruments, singing. A utopia is what he's saying here. He did all of this. And you know where this is going probably. Verse 10, and whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. Anything I saw that I wanted, I bought it. Anything. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Isn't that something? So next time you think, well, if I just got this item, I'd be happy. You know, if I could just buy that house, I'd be happy. If I could just get that car, I'd be happy. If I could just have that necklace or that ring, if I could just, you know, go on this vacation, then I would be happy and satisfied. Here's a man who bought everything that he wanted. And once he got it, he said, you know, I'm still not happy. Because things don't make you happy. Cars don't make you happy. Houses don't make you happy. Clothes don't make you happy. The eye of man is never satisfied. Things don't make you happy. And that's what Solomon concludes. Verse number 12. And I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man do that cometh after the king? Even that which hath been already done. 
Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly. As far as light excelleth darkness. So he's saying, when I compared my foolishness to my wisdom, wisdom pays off every time. Foolishness never pays off. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. So he says the wise man's eyes are in his head, meaning that he uses them to see. But the fool, he's in darkness. He can't see anything. And then he says about it all uh, that as he looks at the wise man and the fool, though, the same things happen to both. You know, foolish men get flat tires and wise men get flat tires. Foolish ladies lose things that are important to them. And wise ladies lose things that are important to them. The wise and the fool, the same things happen to both of us. Verse number 15. Then said I in my heart, as it happeneth to the fool, so it happeneth even to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vanity. <laughs> so he's saying all this extra wisdom that I had, it doesn't help me in these areas where I wished it would help me. All of this extra knowledge and understanding, it doesn't benefit me when I really need it to. I suffer the same problems that fools suffer. Verse 16, For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days of come, uh, to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man? As the fool. He says, you know, foolish men, when they die, people forget about them. And wise men, when they die, people forget about them. They don't pay them any attention. They don't pay them any mind. And so, what, what's the benefit of being a wise man? We both die exactly the same, don't we? Verse 17, therefore, <laughs> here comes some cynicism. Are you ready? Therefore, I hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. So Solomon comes to hate his life because he knows that nothing of eternal value is coming from it. Now again, this is speaking from the perspective of a lost man. It's speaking from the perspective of a carnal man. Carnal people and lost people are wasting their lives. There's nothing to be uh, made from any of it. And so here... We've got him choosing to write under this perspective. We shouldn't be living that way. We should be living unto eternal purposes, investing in heavenly things. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 6, Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and neither do thieves break through and steal. Verse number 18, yea, I hated all my labor, which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. He says, I built this big old house, but somebody else is going to move into it who didn't have to do the work in order to build it. I, I got this beautiful horse that I bought, but some other guy's going to ride it as soon as I drop dead. And he didn't have to do anything for it. Verse number 19, and who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool. Yet shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. He says, I don't know if the guy that's going to inherit all my stuff will be a wise man or a foolish man. You know, here I am, wise, working hard, diligently, earning these things, and then who's going to get it? And these are the problems of people who are wrapped up in this life. I'll be honest with you. When I die, I don't care what happens to my house. I don't care what happens to my car. I don't want to care what happens to my clothes. None of it's going to matter to me. They were useful for a certain period of time, for a certain purpose, but I don't live for these things. I don't care about these things. I'm thankful that I have them. I'm thankful that they're nice. I'm thankful that they provide me comfort, but I don't live under these things by any means. And this is a man who does, though who's so caught up in everything that they own. Verse number 20. 
Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. And this is how discouragement sets in and can turn into depression. When you start obsessing over things that you don't have any control over and you're obsessing over things that shouldn't matter to you, I'll be honest with you, most of the things you get upset with probably don't even matter and shouldn't matter to you. Most of the things I get upset about shouldn't matter to me. We get so wrapped up in things that have no value, no point to them. Next verse, 21. For there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and in knowledge and in the uh, uh, equity. Yet to a man that hath not labored therein, shall he leave it for his portion? This also is vanity and a great evil. For what man, for what hath man of all his labor, and of, all, and of the vexation of his heart wherein he hath labored under the sun? For all his days are sorrows, and his travail grief. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. He says, you know, everything that a man works for, it doesn't come to anything. And it all vanishes away the second that he dies. Verse 24. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. Now, this is a very helpful verse and a, and a turning point in this mentality. This mentality that says, how can I make this life last? How can I make the, the goodness and comforts of this world last? Well, the answer is you can't. There's nothing you can do to make it last. What you can do, though, is enjoy it while you have it. Read the verse again. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. It is a gift from God to enjoy a meal. It is a gift from God to enjoy a cool drink. It is a gift from God to enjoy the fruits of our labor, but we shouldn't think that those are the things that matter most in life. We shouldn't wrap our lives up in them. Our lives should not consist of the ownership of the possessions we've acquired. Life is far more than the accumulation of possessions. Verse number 25, For who can eat, or else who can hasten hereunto more than I? For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail, to gather and to heap up, that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. <laughs> so the wicked, the sinner, they'll go out and they'll work and they'll travail and they'll pay a price and they're going to have struggles and problems and they're heaping it all up for those who are doing good. The Bible says that the wealth of the righteous, I'm sorry, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And so God takes from sinful and wicked people and uses those things to bless good and godly people. And then he says, this also is vanity. <laughs> so good chapter there, steering our attention away from carnality, from earthly possessions, earthly accumulations. These things are nice. Enjoy them. That's what he said in verse 24. Enjoy them. Let them bless you. You know, thankful for the computers, right? Thankful for the phones, whatever device you're watching on right now, because we get to talk like this. I get to talk to you. You get to comment, and it's good. We enjoy that. But you know what? If you, you, you your phone gets broken, that's okay. They make millions of them every day. You know, your computer breaks down. That's all right. That's what computers do. Uh, you know, maybe you're struggling a little bit, you don't have money to pay the bill, and so you, you lose your service for a month. Hey, you know, that's okay. The world doesn't revolve around devices, around technology. We can, we can look for eternity, and we can look for eternal value in these things. All right, that's all. 21 minutes there. 
this morning. I'm glad we're out of Psalms. I enjoyed it, but it's nice to be changing gears. I saw a couple of you even said something about that. But uh, I'm glad you're watching. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Like, love, share the post, please. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock for chapter number three. God bless you. Have a great Tuesday.